and how it works in Cisco SD-WAN. What are all the key components on Cisco SD-WAN, which is called WebTel at the moment. And maybe we will go with a deep dive on how actually it works in deep dive, like uh, what are all the timers and how the calculation happens. Final wrap up with the business benefit. What exactly application of a routing is going to give a benefit to our enterprise customer? And uh, finally, we'll wrapping up with a thank you. Okay, so let's kick off. So, what is application of a routing? If you see, application of a routing is some way of intelligent mechanism to forward your data traffic across your van. It could be van, could be of multiple links, maybe of MPLS, internet, or 3G where you ensure that you have a pre-application performance matrix or SLA class is defined. So what do you mean by SLA class? So what we say is that you actually defined an interesting traffic, which is actually mission critical for your enterprise. So it could be that that particular application always been given a priority and always ensure that it is actually given in right transport. So that means that you are actually mapping with some metric value at a service level agreement that this application should not get violated as per this particular performance matter. If it gets violated, then take a necessary action. And that should be seamless to an end user without even session break. Right? So it's a basic definition on A. What we say that application network traffic, how it actually does is it, it actually tracks the network and path characters of the data plane between your edge devices. It could be edge devices, could be in Cisco's world, I mean VH or other symmetric SD-WAN devices, right? So it is actually, I mean, it is actually tracking the network and the path characters. It could be jitter, it could be delay, it could be, you know, uh, anything you can say, uh, latency, etc., and other stuff. So application of a routing is more than what we do in dynamic routing protocol. Like we load balance the traffic between the links with the help of your metric or hop or any other stuff you can think about right so it actually does much ahead of that so i mean standard topology what i want to say what we have described on these two points is you have two branches and data center and they have the connectivity with full mesh with mpls and stuff and the connectivity happens that you want to access some mission critical application host from branch so all the things happens so actually normally happens is the internet links or MPLS link transport and they actually come up the data plane come up it could be an IPsec or MSec or whatever the overlay it has been done right so most of the SD-WAN vendors they do their own mechanism of uh, gathering the characteristics so most of the vendors normally use BFD so BFD uses or BFD actually the BFD packets runs between your point to point boxes which gets and captures your round trip time, which actually helps to calculate your packet loss or latency and jitter at the low, etc. Right? So application of a routing actually simply calculates all those things what VFD has actually gathered for it. So that's why you can simply define it as application of a routing, it just as a policy based automation of uh, performance management. You understand what the definition is? What I'm saying is you are making routing as an application level so what that means is routing is done intelligently based on the application need so you are actually maintaining the service level agreement that this particular application is required to be maintained when maintained with certain SLAs when it is actually running on a data path on your network okay so you can see with some animation that primary path is this the primary path goes or it actually breaches an SLA, then you automatically switch over to the secondary path without even intervention of any user or network administrator or any alarm. So it is seamless. So overall, this particular slide speaks about what is application of a route, right? Which is one of the critical point or critical aspect or critical use case in software defined by data. So let's go on to the next slide where we speak about how it works with Cisco's uh, SD-WAN. So how normally Cisco's SD-WAN happens, there are three main components. In order to do an application of a routing in SD-WAN with Cisco, you first need to identify. So what is your interesting application 
and you need to define certain SLA along with that. So if I say SLA means SLA is some sort of metric value you are binding. So let's suppose for example, uh, if, if I say you have a mission critical application of voice, right? you have selected that this is your interesting application. And you have maintained and binded that this particular application should always prefer my primary path of MPLS because of its nature of availability and that MPLS should be binded with certain SLA like it should not exceed 2 millisecond of latency or you say that it should not have more than delay of 50 milliseconds or you say that the jitter should not be of 2 something like that so those are the SLA metrics which have been binded with an application and based on those particular SLA metric which is actually binded on your transport line and the magic actually happens automatically between the boxes because of the automatic intelligence operation VFP actually actually holds on and holds the health of the transport medium so that AAR uses I mean a application of a routing uses the VFD's collected information to do certain action without even intervention right so second part is about the monitoring of machine as I said BFT is a mechanism which has been leveraged by Vectel or Cisco SD WAN, if I say in today's world, which normally monitors the data traffic and measure the performance of the tunnels. Why I am saying tunnel is because that is where the data traffic is actually flowing. It's a signal. So it's an IPC tunnel, and BFT actually measure the data traffic on the tunnel and actually collect the performance of all the packets which are flowing between your BH devices. And WebTela software, which actually look for the traffic loss or latency, which are been measured or which have been collected by the BFD, either it's one way or long time, right? Or the traffic leaving over the tunnel, something like you can call, right? And finally, you map the application map. Based on what are the collected information from the BFD, so WebTela software normally do a calculation of average base, what is the packet latency or packet jitter or the delay. And is it matching the SLA metric which is binded with the critical application? And based on that, it automatically takes and then map the application to a required uh, transport based on certain two criteria, which could be like the best path criteria for that performance or specified by some policies, what we are saying as AER. So, let's see some animation how things happen. So, so maybe you can say with uh, two branch networks which are connected with service provider and over an IP signal. Like, traffic actually flows like this. Now, so based on the things that once the PFD packets are uh, to and fro and stuff, so it actually gets collected on VH. Okay. So let's see some of the interesting part of uh, how it actually works on a deep time. I mean majorly how the calculation happens and uh, what all the things happens behind the screen. So how it works. The first the classification of tunnel happens. Let's uh, look at this on the deep inside. How the classification of tunnel happens is okay. first most point happens is how the measurement the measurement of loss latency and jitter which are the key SLA what we defined on the transport medium and how it happens is let's see that so you have branch location maybe branch one or branch two in the left and right and you have one service provider which is having a data plane connectivity with IP sector and which actually has the full flesh full flesh connectivity between the two and your first PFD packet flows from your branch 1 to branch 2 or maybe it's a round trip time or one way drive and this PFD packets get collected with the logs of loss and latency and jitter on that particular time right? and the second one also comes with another same pattern and which also give you the same stats of loss, latency and jitter like in the third one right? In the architecture, the BFD packets are by default of one second. Okay, so you can say the BFD session uh, or the BFD hello packet interval, it is of one second by default. You can tweak that, but better recommendation to have one second because you can have an accuracy of what the health of the transport link is being uh, actual better for your application performance. And BFD session automatically starts. It's a by default nature of Cisco's SD WAN architecture. Once the data plane tunnel came, comes up over the overlay, automatically VH routers are enabled with the BFD session. So your data polling 
of VFD packet starts and VHD routers start pumping the information of all those VFD information to measure the law of latency and the real and uh, AAR, which is application of our cloud data, where you actually define some policies, intelligent policies, I would say, which is actually benefit for us because customer uses this VFD packets. Because VFD packet is actually built automatically without your, without your knowledge also. I mean, it's just uh, taking the pain and just getting the information of the transport uh, health. And AAR, with the policies of the SLA metric, what has been measured, or what has been asked to do as a reaction, it uses all these BFD packets. And uh, based on that, we have to do the reaction or the action, I would say, an action of an SLA class, what we need to do, whatever I've actually uh, collected with the help of BFD. Right? So let's uh, go to the next one. What happens is we have done the measurement now. So you have collected the measurement. Of or the health of your transport, maybe I would say the measurement you would say in the health of a transport that how healthy is your transport link is. How? With the help of BFD packets, which is flowing between your devices every one second. Okay. So, next part comes about the calculation. This is one of the best things which happens. On what basis the health is poor or better or the best? You decide the calculation of mass latency, etc. So VFD normally it actually pulls the VH router periodically, right? So as I said, because of uh, its nature of one second, so it's actually pulling for every one second between your devices, and the pull interval, uh, what you say is actually a bucket in uh, Webtel, I mean in Cisco system. So application of routing it actually calculates the average why i'm saying is average because the pole interval i said as a bucket right so it's a bucket of 10 minutes so if i say 10 minutes you can think about that vfd packet which is of one second each and every for every one second you are actually sending a vfd packet between your devices so for one minute you are having a 60 packets right what about them in 10 minutes? 600 packets. So, 600 packets are kept in store in a virtual bucket which is called as pole interval. Understand? So, what happens is on this 600, I mean, after 10 minutes, you get one pole interval. So, by default, there are six buckets of preserved in this particular VH round. So, if I say six means one hour. So 10 minutes for one bucket, which is having an uh, all data calculation gathered for almost 600 packets, right? And the same then it happens for another 10 minutes, which is called the bucket 2, which is called, then it actually have the data for 20 minutes, then third bucket for 6, 30 minutes, 4, for 40, then the third, something like the 10, 10, 10, 10, 20, then you can say, 10, 10 plus 20, 20 plus 30, 30 plus 40, 50, and 60. So if you see the six buckets, which is of one hour, right? so what happened to the seventh one? When the seventh bucket comes, or the seventh interval, pole interval started, right? So normally happens as an intelligent that the earliest bucket get discarded. So what do you mean by the earliest bucket? The first bucket, which was taken on the initial at the beginning of the starting of the BFD flow pack. You understand? So that particular bucket is get discarded. So you always have the latest information. That is bucket 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again one comes as bucket 7. So the the beauty of this is you always have the latest real-time information which is being used to calculate the average by these buckets or the pole interval. I mean by AAR which calculates the average with the help of this BFD packets which are stored on these pole intervals which are called buckets to get you the actual and the best and the realistic performance of the health of your transport which is best suited for your enterprise applications. Okay? So you can see how interesting is how the overall concept happens. So normally we speak that so we normally you know map or measure the loss. What I'm 
trying to explain you that how it has been done at the moment and what is the key core concept which actually help us to do all this is BFT and how AAR uses BFT with goal intervals and the BFT packets and how the magic happens is that we are going anyway going to see in our next video on part 2 in a live demo how things happen. So this particular video mainly speaks about the overall concept, how the application of our routing is influencing SD band because of all these technical stuff what I'm saying at the moment. Okay, so let's see some animation. What, whatever I have thought so far, and what I'm saying actually. You have two branches, and you have some providers. Maybe I'm just taking one service provider here, and you got an IP sector now. Then the magic start. So you get a BFD packet every one, one second. I say. So the BFD is going to and fro from your uh, branch one to branch two. Then it actually ends up in the whole interval, which is a logical clock. So I'm just taking one wave below, you can say as and so every 10 minutes one bucket is actually being spawned, so you get 10 uh, BFD packets. So once the BFD packets been captured on pole interval 1, so assume that it, it has applied that pole interval 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the 7th pole interval comes live. So what happens? So once the 7th interval comes live, so the pole interval can one, which was your bucket one, gets discarded. Then the same uh, pattern happens. Every one second, the BFT is actually going to go to measure the real health of the transport, so that your application of the router is working as expected without even any flaw. Make sense? Good. So I mean, this is what the whole story, like how the things happen with the application of the router and how intelligently it actually giving you the realistic awareness of your transport medium and this is best for my mission critical application and the other transport is best for backup mode and let's see the help so which is not feasible in uh, today's world if you think about the traditional bank route and you can do to so much on that with some IPS cells and stuff but those are very cumbersome in terms of complication you need to manage and react so that's the beauty and power of this one. You don't need to do anything once the boxes come and connect in connect in your SD and code managing. IP set them and automatically comes out, BFD automatically comes out. So it's just a matter of this creation of the policies. And policies uses all this intelligence and algorithm and developed by or leveraged by the vendors so that you can easily configure, manage and monitor. And as well as in case of any problem issues or in case of any service provider issue, you don't need to worry. Everything will work as if like a charm that you, you don't need to worry and bother about users, uh, SL is getting better because these intelligence or application of your routing, that's why it is called application of your routing, it automatically take care of what you need to do without even your intervention. Okay? So what, what are the business benefits? With application of the routing, I mean, so far what we thought, is, uh, what we have seen is, what do you mean by application of the routing, and uh, how it actually influences SD band, and how it works on a deep dive with uh, how the measurement happens, how the packet flow happens, or how the overall calculation happens, and what it actually proves. Right. So, what exactly is the business benefit given to your enterprise? Number one is an uptime. Uptime in terms of service availability. If I say improve service availability, so what does that mean? What I'm saying here is service availability for your application. What happens in today's world is if you're not having any intelligence in your SD as a proactive way of uh, transferring the application over some other transport medium intelligently. So, how many happens is if you are running an application over an MPL. And if something is having a problem on the service provider and inside the provider's network, it will never be an issue with respect to an outage of an application. It will always be a degradation in performance, right? Because of the problem issues. And availability or the service availability of your end user will always be a degrade. So the improved service availability point makes sure that application of a routing intelligently decide what is the best path to meet the SLA 
SLA for an application so that user is always happy. That's why we say that it actually gives you an uptime with respect to service available. Okay. Second point, second point is for performance. Enhanced application performance because enhanced application performance is the health of a transport medium is continuously measured. And we are measuring all the parameters, ESL inventory, cost, jitter, delay, even the bandwidth, or you can say any other load also be getting measured so that proactively. So that what I'm saying is you are proactively doing the changes or movement of your application traffic to the best available time without even intervention or without even reactive and user shouting or other and you go even you have a box of monitoring too, but it still becomes reactive. So it is become an intelligent based routing and you don't need to worry. Everything is done based on the policy you can define for the application that is defined as a critical for your interface world. Okay? The third one cost. Why I'm saying is the cost is become reduced because you are effectively using both the internet or both the interface of hybrid internet or internet space. What happens in traditional world is you must use both the transport very efficient. One load will be one will be heavily loaded and you will still the day or the other load which won't be having that much load. And what I'm end up is because of not having any intelligence on your transport media, you will be actually upgrading the bandwidth. If at all if then if the primary or secondary link just getting pumped. Because the user traffic is actually blindly sending on those particular link with just PDR based concept or with some telemetry analysis you are doing, right? So what happens is nothing needs to be done. So because of the intelligence of application on the ground link, and the health is getting checked in very frequently with some with short time intervals, both your links are efficient to choose. So you can think about that the bandwidth cost which you are actually blindly increasing in your application. You don't need to do that. But still, the bandwidth will be increased not to an extent, but to a small extent with a valid and justified reason. Yes, you require a bandwidth because of your increment happened and the load is getting and the user interest is getting rather just saying that, okay, I'm just pumping out some traffic on some traffic and you know, it's 99% getting increased, I just need to upgrade. So you're efficiently also using both the links. So you can think that if you're having a primary link of 2 MBPS or 10 MBPS of primary link and the secondary link of 5 MBPS. If only primary link gets utilized, so we are just pumping out or just you know, increase the bandwidth of the patient. Rather, we can focus on secondary links. If at all, we do load sharing or load balancing. Okay? So we never used to think that uh, we actually load balancing on the right uh, methodology or not. Uh, I mean, is a packet or the application traffic is really required that we project. So that's why I'm saying there's a reduction in cost because of the intelligence what we have developed with the help of application of the cloud. The final piece is reliability. So with reliability, what I'm saying is links reliability. You get to know the links, how much they are reliable. So you don't need to worry about the, the link will work on this particular day and time if it is a mission critical time frame. Because of this intelligent and uh, uh, immediate pollings which have been done on this particular unit based on that SLA is getting binded, SLA class is applied on these particular mission critical policies. So you don't need to worry, everything will be taken care of by all this intelligence which has been done on this particular on this particular application of our routing, which helps to achieve our service availability of the application or making happy of user user because their performance gets gets high rated or users uh, get a high value you know the access the application because the performance is met and the link reliability also automatically comes into picture because of this intelligence algorithm or you can say some intelligence routing or some intelligence data capture based on that the decisions are being made so these are the direct benefits business benefit you can think which actually been running on top of the technology which is one of the feature or technology called SGVAM, under which application of routing is one of the key pillar. Is one of the key pillar which is actually helping out to make your mission critical application safe on any of your transport medium 
or maybe on a commodity based lots of medium with actually achieving all these major core measures. Okay. So with this, I would just like to say thank you and I would love to hear from you in case of you have any queries or doubt with respect to application of routing uh, so that we can discuss more and we can think about what all the new topics we may need to discuss or what all the major feature or use case you have in this different use case. We are still open to talk. So finally, I would say thank you. Keep watching and subscribe this video for more talks and be ready for the part two for the live demo for application of the routing. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I'm back with my fourth video on Cisco, SD-WAN, WebTela. Today what we are going to speak more on application aware routing, which is one of the critical and important aspect to understand in software defined by data networking. Application aware routing also called as an acronym called AAR, which is one of the biggest magic which actually been done in software defined by data network where you don't need to be reactive. Everything been done by policies with some intelligent monitoring aspects done by all the SD WAN vendors and it is actually transparent to the end user. Okay. So we will kick off with that particular presentation on AAR along with uh, demo in my part two. So part one will be more focusing on the following agenda with we are going to see what is application aware routing and how it works in Cisco SD WAN what are all the key components on Cisco SD WAN which is called WebTel at the moment and maybe we will go with the deep dive on how actually it works in deep dive like uh, what are all the timers and how the calculation happens final wrap up with the business benefit what exactly application aware routing is going to give a benefit to our enterprise customer and uh, finally we'll wrapping up with a thank you okay so let's kick off so what is application aware routing if you see application aware routing is some way of intelligent mechanism to forward your data traffic across your van it could be van could be of multiple links maybe of mpls internet or 3g where you ensure that you have a pre-application performance matrix or sla class is defined so what do you mean by sla class so what we say is that you actually defined an interesting traffic which is actually mission critical for your enterprise so it could be that that particular application always been given a priority and always ensure that it is actually given a right transfer. So that means that we are actually mapping with some metric value at a service level agreement that this application should not get violated as per this particular performance matter. If it gets violated, then take a necessary action and that should be seamless to an end user without even session break. Right. So it's a basic definition on AI. What we say that application network traffic, how it actually does is it, it actually tracks the network and path characters of the data plane between your edge devices. It could be edge devices, could be in Cisco's world, I mean VH or other symmetric SD WAN devices, right? So it is actually, I mean, it is actually tracking the network and the path characters. It could be jitter, it could be delay, it could be, you know, uh, anything you can say. Uh, latency etc and other stuff so application of a routing is more than what we do in dynamic routing protocol like we load balance the traffic between the links with the help of your metric or hop or any other stuff you can think about right so it actually does much ahead of that so I mean standard topology what I want to say what we have described on these two points is you have two branches and data center and they have the connectivity with full mesh with MPLS and stuff and the connectivity happens that you want to access some mission critical application host from branch so all the things happens so actually normally happens is the internet links or MPLS link transport then they actually come up the data plane come up it could be an IPsec or MSec or whatever the overlay is being done right so most of the SD-WAN vendors they do their own mechanism of uh, gathering the characteristics so most of the vendors normally use BFD so BFD uses or BFD actually the BFD packets runs between your point-to-point -point boxes which gets and captures your route trip time with actually 
helps to calculate your packet loss or latency and jitter at the load or etc right so application aware routing actually simply calculates all those things what vfd has actually gathered for it so that's why you can simply define as application aware routing it just as a policy based automation of uh, performance management you understand what the definition is what i'm saying is you are making routing as an application aware so what that means is routing is done intelligently based on the application need so you are actually maintaining the service level agreement that this particular application is required to be maintained when maintained with certain sls when it is actually running on a data path on your network okay so you can see with some animation that primary path is this if the primary path goes or it actually breaches an sla then you automatically switch over to the secondary path without even intervention of any user or network administrator or any alarm so it is seamless so overall this particular slide speaks about what is application aware routing right which is one of the critical point or critical aspect or critical use case in software defined by data okay so let's go on to the next slide where we speaks about how it works with cisco's uh, sd wan so how normal cisco sd wan happens there are three main components in order to do an application of a routing in sd wan in cisco you first need to identify so what is your interesting application and you need to define certain sla along with it so if i say sla means sla is some sort of metric value you are binding so let's suppose for example uh, if if i say you have a mission critical application of voice right you are selected that this is your interesting application and you have maintained and binded that this particular application should always prefer the primary path of mpls because of its nature of availability and that mpls should be binded with certain sla like it should not exceed 2 millisecond of latency or you say that it should not have more than delay of 50 milliseconds or you say that the jitter should not be of 2 something like that so those are the sla metrics which have been binded with an application and based on those particular sla metric which is actually binded on your transport and the magic actually happens automatically between the boxes because of the automatic intelligence what they share called pfd the pfd act actually pulls all the i mean pulls the health of the transport medium so that aar uses i mean a application aware routing uses the pfd's collected information to do certain action without even intervention right so second part is about the monitoring and measuring as i said BFD is a mechanism which has been leveraged by Vectel or Cisco SD WAN, if I say in today's world, which normally monitors the data traffic and measure the performance of the tunnels. Why I'm saying tunnel is because that is where the data traffic is actually flowing. It's a secure. So it's an IPsec tunnel, and BFD actually measure the data traffic on the tunnel and actually collect the performance of all the packets which are flowing between your BSG devices. and the data software which actually look for the traffic loss or latency which are been measured or which are been collected by the pfd either it's one way or one way right or the traffic leaving over the tunnel something like you can call right and finally you map application path based on what are the collected information from the pfd so the data software normally do a calculation of average base what is the packet latency or packet jitter or the delay And is it matching the SLA metric, which is binded with the critical application? And based on that, it automatically takes and then map the application to a required uh, transport based on certain two criteria, which could be like the best path criteria for RAM performance, or specified by some policies. What we are saying is AER. So let's see some animation how the things happen. So, so maybe you can say with uh, two branch networks which are connected with service provider and over an IP signal. Network. traffic actually flows like this now so based on the things that once the vfd packets are uh, to and fro and stuff so it actually gets collected on vh routes okay so let's see some of the interesting part of uh, how it actually works on a deep time i mean majorly how the calculation happens and 
what all the things happens behind the screen. So how it works? The first the classification of tongue happens. Let's look at this on a deep insight how the classification of tongue happens is. First, most point happens is how the measurement. The measurement of loss, latency and jitter, which are the key SLM metro, what we defined on the transport medium and how it happens is. Let's see that. So you have branch location, maybe branch one or branch two in the left and right, and you have one service provider which is having a data plane connectivity with IP segment and which actually has the full fresh full fresh connectivity between the two. And your first PFD packet flows from your branch one to branch two. Or maybe it's a round trip time or one way time. And this BFD packets get collected with the logs of loss and latency and jitter on that particular tunnel. Right? And the second one also comes with another with same pattern and which also give you the same stats of loss, latency and jitter. Like in the third one. Right? In Vettala architecture, the BFD packets are by default of second. So you can say the BFD session uh, or the BFD hello packet interval, it is of one second by default. You can tweak that. But better recommendation to have one second because you can have an accuracy of what the health of the transport link is being uh, actual better for your application performance. And BFD session automatically starts. It's a by default nature of Cisco SD WAN architecture. Once the data plane tunnel came, comes up over the overlay, automatically VH routers are enabled with the BFD session. So your data polling of VFD packet starts and VH routers start pumping the information of all those BFD information to measure the loss latency and jitter of that. You don't need to do anything extra. And uh, AAR, which is application of accounting, where you actually define some policies, intelligent policies, I would say, which is actually benefit for the customer, uses this BFD hello packets. Because BFD packet is actually being done automatically without your, without your knowledge also. I mean, it's just uh, taking the beer and just getting the information of the transport uh, health. And AAR, with the policies of the SLM metric, what has been measured, or what has been asked to do as a reaction, it uses all these BFD hello packets. And uh, based on that, it actually do the reaction or the action, I would say, an action of an SLA class what we need to do, whatever I've actually uh, collected with the help of BFD, right? So let's uh, go to the next one. What happens is we have done the measurement now. So you have collected the measurement of or the health of your transport. Maybe I would say the measurement, you would say in the health of the transport, that how healthy is your transport link is. How? With the help of BFD packets, which is flowing between your devices every one second. So next part comes about the calculation. This is one of the best thing which happens. On what basis the health is poor or better or the best you decide the calculation of loss latency. So BFD normally it actually pulls the VH router periodically. Right? So as I said, because of uh, its nature of one second, so it's actually pulling for every one second between your devices. And the pole interval, uh, what you say is actually a bucket in uh, web telephone, I mean, in Cisco system. So, application aware routing, it actually calculates the average. Why I am saying is average? Because the pole interval I said as a bucket, right? So, it's a bucket of 10 minutes. So, I said 10 minutes, you can think about that. BFD packet which is of one second each and every for every one second you are actually sending a BFD packet between the devices. So for one minute you are having 60 packets, correct? Right? And what about them in 10 minutes? 600 packets. So 600 packets are getting stored in a virtual bucket which is called as pole interval. Understand? So what happens is on this 600 I mean, after 10 minutes, you get one pole interval. So, by default, there are six buckets of preserved in this particular pH count. So, if I say six means one hour. So, 10 minutes for one bucket, which is having 
and uh, all data calculation will gather for almost 600 packets, right? And the same then it happens for another 10 minutes, which is called the bucket 2, which is called, then it actually have the data for 20 minutes, then third bucket for six, 30 minutes, 4 for 40, then the third, something like the 10, 10, 10, 10, 20, then we can say uh, 10, then plus 20, 50, plus 30, 30, plus 40, 50, and 60. So if you see the six buckets, which is of one hour, right? so what happened to the seventh one? When the seventh bucket comes or the seventh interval, call interval started, right? So it normally happens as an intelligent that the earliest bucket get discarded. So what do you mean by the earliest bucket? The first bucket, which was taken on the initial of the beginning of the starting of the BMT flow time. You understand? So that particular bucket is get discarded. So you always have the latest information. That is bucket two, three, four, five, six. Again, one comes as Bucket seven. So the the beauty of this is you always have the latest real time information which is being used to calculate the average by these uh, buckets or the pole interval. I mean by AAR which calculates the average with the help of this BFT uh, packets which are stored on these pole intervals which are called buckets to get you the actual and the best and the realistic performance of the health of your transport which is best suited for your enterprise applications okay. so you can see how interesting how the overall concept happens is so normally we speak that so we normally go back or measure the loss latency what i'm trying to explain you that how it has been done until today and what is the key core concept which actually help us to do all this is BMT and how AAR uses BFD with pole intervals and the BFD packets and how the magic happens is that we are going anyway going to see in our next video of part 2 of the light and concepts happening. So this particular video is mainly speaks about the overall concept. How the application of our routing is influencing SD band because of all these technical stuff what I'm saying at the moment. Okay. So let's see some animation what whatever I have thought so far and what I'm saying actually. You have two branches and you have some providers, maybe I'm just taking one service provider here and you got an IPsec tunnel, then the magic starts. So you get a BFD packet every one, one second I say. So the BFD is going to go and flow from your uh, branch one to branch two, then it actually ends up in whole interval which is a logical path. So I'm just taking one wave load you can say as a so every 10 minutes one bucket is actually being spawned so you get 10 uh, BFT packets so once the BFT packets been captured on pole interval 1 so assume that it, it as if like that pole interval 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the 7th pole interval comes live so what happens so once the 7th interval comes live so the pole interval bucket 1 which was in your bucket 1 Gets discarded. In the same uh, pattern happens, every one second the BFD is actually going to and go to measure the real of the transport so that your application level of routing is working as expected without even any flaw. Make sense? Good. So, I mean, this is what the whole story like how the things happen with application of the routing and how intelligently it actually gives you the realistic awareness of your transport medium that this is best for my mission critical application and the other transport is best for backup line and let's see the help so which is not feasible in today's uh, world if you think about the traditional bank and uh, you can do to a certain extent that it's an IPS cell is effective but those are the cumbersome in terms of configuration and you need to manage and react to all those things happen so that's the beauty and power of the CNN you don't need to do anything once the boxes come and connect in connect in the SD and go to the IP system and automatic comes in, BFD automatic comes in. It's just a matter of discretion of policies. And policies uses all these intelligence and algorithm that have been developed by or leveraged by the vendors so that you can easily configure, manage and monitor. And as well as in case of any problem issues or in case of the service provider issue, you only do everything will work as a better chart 
bloody rural to worry on mother about users uh, cell is getting better because these intelligence or application of your routing that's why it is called application of your routing it automatically take care what you need to do without even your intervention okay so what what are the business benefits with application of your routing i mean so far what we thought is, uh, what we have seen is what is the application of your routing and uh, how it actually influence the sd band and how it works on a deep dive with the, how the measurement happens on the packet flow or how the overall calculation happens and what it actually proves right so what exactly is the business benefit given to your enterprise number one is an uptime uptime in terms of service availability if i say improve service availability so what is that means what i'm saying here is service availability for your application what happens in today's world is if you are not having any intelligence in your sd as a proactive way of uh, transferring the application over some other platform you get intelligently so how many happens is if you are running an application over an npm and if something is having a problem on your service provider inside the provider's network it will never be an issue with respect to outage of the application it will always be degradation of performance right because of the problem and availability of the service availability to the end user it always be a degrade so the complete service availability point makes sure that application of your routing intelligently decide what is the best path to meet the sla sla for the application so that user is always happy that's why we say that it actually gives you an uptime with respect to the service available second point second point is the performance enhance application performance because enhance application performance is the health of the transport medium is continuously measured and we are measuring all the parameters we are saying that we are getting a delay in the band or we can say any other load also been getting measured so that proactively so that what i'm saying is we are proactively doing the changes or movement of your application at best available time without the intervention or without the active and use of software or other and even you have a lot of monitoring but it's still within the app so it is within the intelligent based routing that you don't need to do everything is done based on the policy that is defined for the application that is defined as a critical for your enterprise so, okay the third one cost why i am saying is the cost is become reduced because you are effectively using both the internet or both the networks or hybrid internet or both the networks what happened in the digital world is you can only move the transport in very efficiently one load will be one will be heavily loaded and you will still be paying for the other load which won't be having that much so what an end up is because of not having any intelligence on your transport so you will be actually upgrading the band if at all if the primary or secondary just get it pumped because the user traffic is actually blindly sending on those particular link with just PDR based on search or with some telemetry analysis or two right so what happens is nothing will be done so because of the intelligence of application of the band and the health is getting checked in very frequently in some very short time intervals both your links are efficient to choose and you can think about that the kind of cost which you are actually blindly increasing in your application you don't need to do that but still the bandwidth will be increased not to an extent but to a small extent with the varied and justified reason yes you require a bandwidth because of your increment happened and the load is getting and the user is getting rather just saying that okay I'm just pumping out some traffic on the bandwidth getting into this and just to upgrade so you are efficiently also using both the links so you can think that if you are having a primary link of 2 Mbps or 10 Mbps of primary link and the secondary link of 5 Mbps if only primary link gets utilized so you are just pumping out or just so increase the bandwidth of the host rather we can if at all we do load sharing on the bandwidth so we never do something that uh, we actually do and so we can write 
methodology or I mean is a packet for the application path it is really required for the input path. So that's why I'm saying it's a reduction of cost because of the intelligence what we have developed with the help of application of the The final piece is reality. So with the reliability what I'm saying is the links you get to know the link how much they are trying to You don't need to worry about the, the link will work on this particular day and time if it is a machine critical time for because of this intelligent and uh, uh, immediate pollings which are picked up on this particular based on that SLA is getting pined up, SLA class is applied on these particular mission critical policies. So you don't need to worry, everything will be taken care of by all this intelligence which has been done on this particular on this particular application of our routing, which helps achieve our service so availability of the application or making happy of user user because their performance rate gets high rated or users uh, get a high value in order to access the application because the performance is met and the link reliability also automatically comes into picture because of this intelligence algorithm or you can say some intelligence routing or some intelligence data capture based on that the decisions are made. So these are the direct benefits, business benefit you can think which actually be running on top of the technology which is one of the features on a technology called SGVAN under which application of web routing is one of the key pillar. Is one of the key pillars which is actually helping out to make your mission critical application safe on any of your transport media or maybe on commodity based transport media with actually achieving all these major core business benefits. Okay. So with this I would just like to say thank you and I would love to hear from you in case of you have any queries about this application of web routing uh, so that we can discuss more and we can think about what all the new topics we need to discuss and what all the major feature or use case we have to take in the steam of use case. We are still open to talk. So finally I would say thank you, keep watching, subscribe this video for more talks and be ready for the part 2 for the live tip for application of web routing. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I'm back with my fourth video on Cisco SD and Webterra. Today what we are going to speak more on application of air routing, which is one of the critical and important aspects to understand software defined by data network. Application of air routing, also called as an acronym called AAR, which is one of the biggest magic which actually been done in software defined by data network where you don't need to be reactive. Everything been done by policies with some intelligent monitoring aspects done by all the SD-WAN vendors and it is actually transferred to the end user. Okay. So we will kick off with that particular presentation on AAR along with uh, demo in my part two. So part one will be more focusing on the following agenda with we are going to see what is application aware routing and how it works in Cisco SD-WAN what are all the key components on Cisco SD-WAN which is called WebTel at the moment and maybe we will go with the deep dive on how actually it works in deep dive like uh, what are all the timers and how the calculation happens. Final wrap up with the business benefit what exactly application of your routing is going to give a benefit to our enterprise customer and uh, finally with wrapping up with a thank you. Okay, So let's kick off. So what is application of your routing? If you see application of a routing is some way of intelligent mechanism to forward your data traffic across your WAN. It could be WAN could be of multiple links, maybe of MPLS, Internet or 3G, where you ensure that you have a pre-application performance matrix or SLA class is defined. So what do you mean by SLA class? So what we say is that you actually defined an interesting traffic, which is actually mission critical for your enterprise. So it could be that that particular application always been given a priority and always ensure that it is actually given a right transport. So that means that we are actually mapping with some metric value at a service level agreement that this application should not get violated as per this particular performance matter. If it gets violated, then take a necessary action and that should be seamless to an end user without even session break. Right. So it's a basic definition on AI. 
what we say that application network traffic how it actually does is it, it actually tracks the network and path characters of the data plane between your edge devices it could be edge devices could be in cisco's world i mean vh or other symmetric sd wan devices right so it is actually i mean it is actually tracking the network and the path characters it could be jitter it could be delay it could be you know uh, anything you can say uh, latency etc and other stuff so application level routing is more than what we do in dynamic routing protocol like we load balance the traffic between the links with the help of your metric or hop or any other stuff you can think about right so it actually does much ahead of that so i mean standard topology what i want to say what we have described on these two points is you have two branches and data center and they have the connectivity with full mesh with mpls and stuff and the connectivity happens that you want to access some mission critical application host from branch so all the things happen so actually normally happens is the internet links or mpls with the transport when they actually come up, the data will come up, it could be an ip sec or m sec or whatever the over rate is with that link so most of the sdman vendors they do their own mechanism of uh, gathering the characteristics so most of the vendors normally use bft so bft uses or bft actually the bft packets runs between your point to point boxes which gets and captures your round trip time which actually helps to calculate your packet loss or latency and jitter at the lower of etc right so application aware routing actually simply calculates all those things what bft has actually gathered for you so that's why you can simply define it as application aware routing it just as a policy based automation of uh, performance management you understand what the definition is what i'm saying is you are making routing as an application aware so what that means is routing is done intelligently based on the application need so you are actually maintaining the service level agreement that this particular application is required to be maintained when maintained with certain sls when it is actually running on a data path on your network okay so you can see with some animation that primary path is this the primary path goes or it actually breaches an sla then you automatically switch over to the secondary path without even intervention of any user or network administrator or any alarm so it is seamless so overall this particular slide speaks about what is application aware now right which is one of the critical point or critical aspect or critical use case in software defined by data okay so let's go on to next slide where we speaks about how it works with cisco's uh, sd wan so how normally cisco's sd wan happens there are three main components in order to do an application of a routing in sd wan in cisco you first need to identify so what is your interesting application and you need to define certain sla alarm so to say sla means sla is some sort of metric value you are finding so let's suppose for example uh, if if i say you have a mission critical application of voice right you are selected that this is your interesting application and you have maintained and binded that this particular application should always prefer a primary path of mpls because of its nature of availability and that mpls should be binded with certain sl like it should not exceed 2 millisecond of latency or you say that it should not have more than delay of 40 milliseconds or you say that the jitter should not be of 2 something like that so those are the sl metrics which are been binded with an application and based on those particular sl metrics which is actually binded on the transport and the magic actually happens automatically between the boxes because of the automatic intelligence what they share called pfd the pfd act actually pulls all the i mean pulls the health of the transport medium so that aar uses i mean a application of a routing uses the pfd's collected information to do certain action without even intervention right so second part is about the monitoring of the shape as i said DFT is a mechanism which has been leveraged by Cisco SD-WAN, FSA, this 
states, which normally monitors the data traffic and pressures the performance of the tunnels. Why I am saying tunnel is because that is where the data traffic is actually flowing. It's a sector. So it's an IPC tunnel and BFD actually measure the data traffic on the tunnel and actually collect the performance of all the packets which are flowing between your DS devices. And WebTela software which actually look for the traffic loss or latency which are being measured or which are being collected by the BFD either it's one way or the right? or the traffic leaving over the tunnel, something like you can call, right? And finally you map application traffic. Based on what all the collected information from the BFD, the WebTela software model do a calculation of packet space, what is the packet latency or packet taken or the delay, and is it matching the SLA metric which is bounded with the critical application? And based on that, it automatically takes and then map the application. You will require uh, advanced code based on certain two criteria, which could be like the best part criteria for RAM performance or specified by some policies, what we have seen as AER. So let's see some animation how things happen. So, so maybe you can say with uh, two branch networks which are connected to service provider and over an IP signal of traffic action flows. So based on the things that once the BFD packets are uh, to and fro and stuff, so it actually gets collected on VH. Okay. So let's see some of the interesting part of uh, how it actually works on a deep time. I mean majorly how the calculation happens and the what all the things happens behind the screen. So how it works? The first the classification of tongue happens. Let's look at this on the deep inside how the classification of tongue happens. First, most point happens is how the measurement. The measurement of loss, latency and data, which are the key SLA metric, what we defined on the transport medium and how it happens. Is. Let's see that. So you have branch location, maybe branch one or branch two in the left and right and you have one service provider which is having a data plane connectivity with IP sector and which actually has the full fresh full fresh connectivity between the two and your first PFD packet flows from your branch one to branch two or maybe it's a round trip time or one way time and this PFD packets get collected with the logs of loss and latency and data on that particular time right and the second one also comes with another same panel and which also give you the same stats of loss data like in the third one, right? In Vectala architecture, the BFD packets are by default of one second. Okay. So you can say the BFD session uh, or the BFD hello packet interval, it is of one second by default. You can tweak that. But better recommendation to have one second because you can have an accuracy of what the health of the transport link is being uh, actual better for your application performance and BFD session automatically starts it's a by default nature of Cisco SD-WAN architecture once the data plane tunnel cable comes up over the overlay automatically VH routers are enabled with the BFD session so your data polling or BFD packet starts and VH routers start pumping the information of all those BFD information to measure the loss of the on that. You don't need to do anything actually. And uh, AAR, which is application on our ground, where you actually define some policies, intelligent policies, I would say, which is actually very good for the uses those BFD packets. Because BFD packet is actually being running automatically without your, without your knowledge also. I mean, it's just uh, taking the pain and just getting the information of the transport uh, health. And AAR, the policies of the SLA metric, what is measured, or what is being asked to do as a reaction, it uses all these BFD packets. And based on that, it actually do the reaction or the action, I would say, or action of an SLA class and what we need to do. And how we have actually uh, collected with the BFD. Right? So let's uh, go to the next one. What happens is we have done the measurement now. So you have collected the measurement of or the health of your transport maybe I would say measurement you'd say the health of a transport and how healthy is your transport link is. How? With the help of BFD packets which is flowing between your devices every one second. Okay. So next part comes about calculation 
this is one of the best thing which happens on what basis the health is poor or better or the best you decide the calculation of loss rate etc so bft normally it actually holds the vh throughout the periodical right so as i said because of uh, its nature of one second so it's actually pulling for uh, every one second between your uh, devices and the poor interval uh, what you say is actually a bucket in capital uh, commitment space of the so application over routing it actually calculates the average why i'm saying is average because the poor interval is set as a bucket right? so it's a bucket of 10 minutes so i think 10 minutes you can think about the VFT packet which is of one second each and every for every one second you are actually sending a VFT packet so for one minute you are having a six packets a lot more than 10 minutes it's 600 packets so 600 packets are getting stored in a virtual bucket which is called as code understand so what happens is on this 600 after 10 minutes you get one full so by default there are six packets are present in this particular dh bar so it is a six means one hour so 10 minutes for one packet which is having and uh, all data calculation is gathered for almost 600 packets right and the same then it happens for another 10 minutes which is called for packet 2 which is called then it actually have the data for 20 minutes then third bucket for 6 30 minutes four for 40 then the third something like the 10 10 10 10 20 then we can see uh, 10 10 plus 20 20 plus 30 30 plus 40 20 plus 60. so if you see the six buckets which is of one so what happened to the seventh when the seventh bucket comes or the seventh increment, phone increment started, right? So normally happens as an intelligent that the earliest bucket get discarded. So what do you mean the earliest bucket? The first bucket, which was taken on the initial of the beginning of the starting of the BMP You understand? So that particular bucket is get discarded. So you always have the latest information. That is bucket 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again, one comes as bucket 7. So the, the beauty of this is you always have the latest real-time information which is being used to calculate the average by these uh, buckets or the pole interval, I mean by AAR which calculates the average with the help of this uh, BFT packet which are stored on these pole intervals which are called buckets to get you the actual and the best and the realistic performance of the health of your transport which is best suited for your by some applications. Okay. So you can see how interesting how the overall concept happens. So normally we speak that so we normally you know map or measure the loss and what I'm trying to explain is that how it is being done and what and what is the key core concept which actually helps us to do all this is BFT and how AAR uses BFT with coal intervals and the BFT packets and how the magic happens is and we are going anyway we're going to see in our next video how to the like and how things happen. So this particular video mainly speaks about the overall function. How the application of your routing is influencing SD that because of all these technical stuff what I'm saying at the moment. Okay. So let's see some animation what whatever I have taught so far and what I'm saying actually. You have two branches and you have some providers, maybe I'm just taking one service provider here. We got an IP sector now, then the line is start. So you get a BFT packet every one minute, one second I say. So the BFT is going to and fro from your uh, branch one to branch two, then it actually ends up in your own interval, which is a logical form. So I'm just taking one day below, you can say as some, so every 10 minutes one bucket is actually being spawned, so you get 10 uh, BFT packets. So once the BFT packet's been captured on pole interval one, so assume that it, it has up like that pole interval one, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh pole interval comes live. So what happens? So once the seventh interval comes live, 
So the pole interval became one, which was your bucket one. Get this car. When the same you know, pattern happens, every one second the BFT is actually going to and go to measure the real health of the transport so that your application level of the transport is not to as expected without even any flaw. Make sense? Good. So I mean, this is what the whole story is.